<laughs> every time. It's every time we start. We're like, who's going to go first? Who's going to go first? <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for coming in tonight. We have a good show for you tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about kohlrabi, which is one of my favorite vegetables in the garden. Um, like I said, it never makes it to the frying pan. I always eat it raw. Um, but yeah, so we'll be talking about that that tonight. And um, I'm also going to talk about my seed addiction because <laughs> I just bought a ton more seeds from my gardener today. <laughs> um, but I am looking for um, a squash. It's called mashed potato squash. And it's a little teeny acorn squash. And um, I believe it's a hybrid, but I'm looking for it and I'm looking for a reputable seed company that has it because I don't want to just give my credit card number to, you know, a random seed company that might not be legit. So I'm looking for that. I bought a ton more. And by the way, I've been seeing all these recipes online. I want I want to eat healthier for the new year. That's my number one, because especially over the past three days, I've been having horrible stomach issues over the past three days. And so I want to start eating healthier. So I found this really awesome gabonzo bean salad. It's like extra protein and, and stuff like that. And you use like a vinaigrette over the top of it. It looked really, really good. And so I, this year I am going to try an attempt to grow gabonzo beans in the garden. I just Ooh. bought two packs of them from my gardener. <laughs> You know what's really cool though? The, what's the that? fact that they have black ones. I've mm -hmm. never seen a black garbanzo bean ever. They have black ones and they have regular ones. So I got the regular. I got two packs of them. I'm going to grow the crap of them. They grow kind of like a pea. They're actually called chickpea if you, you know, mm -hmm. see them out. So I'm going to try and do the garbanzo beans this year and see if I can get enough of them. I'll start making salads and stuff. Speaking of salads, I bought a ton of lettuce as well. Some red romaines and stuff like that. I've been craving salad, but like, if you know me, you know, I don't buy salad from the grocery store because I don't want to die. <laughs> so I just, um, I've been craving lettuce and stuff. So I bought a bunch of lettuce seeds um, and stuff like that. So I'm kind of excited. Um, also, you know, I just watched a video and I think this kind of correlates with what we're going to show you or later on. Um, I just watched a, like a video. It was on Netflix. It was about food and poison. I think it was called poison. And it was talking about how the meat industry for a while was having issues with E. coli, but since they figured it out and figure out what causes it, they have actually put in more regulations. So your meat is actually um, better for you. And they said right now, the lead in the industry for people dying is on your, on your cheeseburger. It's the lettuce, the tomato, and um, onions, because more than likely those would have a col E. coli on them. And actually not too bad long ago in 2018, they recalled a bunch of romaine lettuce. Do remember that? Where a bunch of people died? Oh, all over coli. the place. Yeah. And so yes. I watched a huge video about it. It was really cool. Um, I cannot think of the name of it right now, but it was on Netflix. And so, yeah, I'm like, that kind of drove me to want to plant more lettuce. Like, I'm going to go out there and plant my own lettuce because I know what I watered it with. <laughs> And I know what I have on it as far as in my soil. So that is probably the best way um, to grow um, your own vegetables is just grow your own vegetables because it seems as if the things, and not that I'm scaring people, I don't want to scare anybody, but it seems like the things in the grocery store are just not credible anymore. There's always a recall on something. It's scary. I do only buy my meat from the local butcher. Um, so I know there's no issues there. Um, but as far as vegetables, you don't really have a choice in the winter time. I mean, you can't really freeze lettuce, you know, wow. so you don't really have a choice that much. So I really like go like the entire winter without eating lettuce because I don't want to get E. coli. It's like scary. And yes, it is always the romaine, isn't it? Happy Mac. Yeah. Well, the way yeah. they mass produce everything, I mean, they're just going out in a field, taking it, throwing it. You yeah. know, to the next person, up to trucks. It's it's pretty insane how they do the harvest and how fast they do it. Yeah. Uh, the waste actually goes with it too. If they're if it's machine wise, 
I mean, there's so much waste. It's on freaking right. believable. There were in the video they were talking about how they raise the cattle uh, across from a river that is across from the river from romaine lettuce farm. Mm -hmm. So that's why the romaine lettuce was getting E. coli is because of the animals they were using the water to spray on the fields that had animal feces in it. So mm -hmm. it was just like, you know, and there's only two places in the United States that grow romaine in mass quantities and it's placed in California and in Arizona for some weird reason. Hmm. So it was just like really cool to watch. And I got a lot of information on it. Obviously I don't believe everything that I'm watching, but mm -hmm. it is true. Like I, I have always said like those fast food restaurants never wash their lettuce. So I've always been like, if I get a burger out somewhere, I always say minus the lettuce because I don't mm -hmm. trust it. So Something to think about, guys. <laughs> let's, see, let's see who's in the chat. I mean, guys, Cole, we got a really good show. We really do. We put a lot of effort in this show. Um, we have Dr. Paula Ruffin. She's going to do her the health benefits. We got Did You Know with Juju Jujubi, uh, Kohlrabi A to Z. We're giving out some seeds today and some books. Um, we're also going to show a video after we say hi, hi to people in the chat. I want to know who's here. We got 26 people already here. Thank you, everyone, for coming, sharing us out, liking it, and all that blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, you know, people here from one ear out the other. <laughs> but thank you guys for liking us. I appreciate it. Hey, Sean. Um, got... Look at that. Connie Davidson, thank you guys for coming in. You guys are awesome. So we got Susan Goulet, Milk and, Heritage, Milk and Honey Heritage Farms, Gail Southern Living. What Life, welcome in, Kathleen Moran, Built on a Rock Homestead, Wanda Moses, P&J's Homestead Adventures, Jersey Twister, it's a twister, it's a twister, I love saying that, there's Connie Davidson, David Gray, oh, so we got somebody new here today, welcome to the uh, our show, Joyfully oh, Orange Debra. All the way from West Virginia. Welcome, we got Dragon Cat. Let's see, Happy Mac is here. That's right, Mike's K Guardian. I, Matt, man, I'm saying it like Joe now. <laughs> you I are. Mean, you're done. You're done. You're done. <laughs> I totally no. It's so easy to grow your own lettuce, um, especially regular, just leaf lettuce, not even the heads. Like you could totally grow that leaf lettuce out there. I just bought a ton of it, romaine, red romaine, um, and I bought some other stuff from MI Gardener. Um, I used the hashtag grow big again, got my 10% off. Um, I was a nut. I was a nut today. I just bought a bunch of stuff. Like I was, I was like, man, and I just literally spent like $40 um, about a week ago. <laughs> I have issues. But, you know, you see stuff. And then I also have a food forest. So I'm like, whoo, I could put that in my food. You know, you, then you just get ideas. And um, so, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I'm a seedaholic. <laughs> I'll add to that in a couple seconds. <laughs> Welcome in, Kim D. It's good to see you. Uh, Shawnee Shave. Shav. <laughs> Chief, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Wait till I read today. Uh, I'll see who else is here. We got uh, 26 people in the chat, and that's what we have. If I miss somebody's name, I'm sorry about that. Before we start that video, I'll show you what I got today. Ooh. Oh, those are so good. The Liza peppers. Yep, I've been growing these, and they are so awesome because they're thick walled. Mm -hmm. You only need one for an omelet. You know, it's like, boom, Delicious. they're super yeah. sweet. What's that? The Varsky. Mm. I'm Polish. Got to get that pepper. <laughs> Let me see. Artisan tomato blush. Ooh. That's the blush. Wait, hold on. Are you giving that away today? No, no. These are mine. Oh, they're yours. I'm like, you're these giving away this one, Steve? Well, you talked about your seed addiction. I wanted to show you mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. One second. We won't be doing collab. Well, I guess you can consider them a collab. We're going to be doing competitions. So wait for that. We have a lit. We're going to have about five vegetables that we're going to do competitions with. 
And um, then we'll come up with those. And then whoever gets the biggest uh, basically wins. So we're going to, we're going to have that. So. Yeah, it's actually going to be six contests. One we're definitely doing if you guys want to buy the seed for that. And then my gardener is the watermelon radish. <laughs> but the key to this one, because this is going to be our first contest, the key to this, if it splits, it doesn't count. Hello, Chris. Pyatt. So, Pyatt? Welcome Thank in, you. Chris. And how to garden. Thank you guys for coming in. Well, I anyway, I'm going to go over these contests. All these seeds another time. We got too much stuff to go over. Dude, I'm so I'm so excited. You, me and you both have big time seed addictions. Yes, it's not. <laughs> it's a terrible thing. Okay, guys. Well, a welcome in how to garden. Good to see you. So this video, um, I've been following this since the very beginning. And if I host something in my house, I'm going to show it as a premiere at my house, actually, which would be pretty cool. But I don't see that happening. But anyway, I wanted to advertise their film. It's called Six Inches of Soil. I don't know if you guys saw this anywhere yet. This but... is so cool, guys. I, you really pay attention because it's, it's some good stuff. Okay, here we go. Six Inches of Soil. Six Inches of Soil feeds eight billion people. We already grow enough of all the human essential nutrients to feed everyone who's alive. Farming is the single biggest cause of biodiversity collapse, the second biggest cause of climate change. Soil is the most valuable resource on the planet, and we're degrading it without even realizing. We have come to believe that money is more important than soil. That idea has to change. Regenerative agriculture is farming, that we're producing food, but also farming in harmony with nature. You're working with nature, not against it. The more people see it, the more that they realize that it works. Having a regenerative agroecological system, that is surely the solution. Soils are absolutely phenomenal in the amount of carbon they can store. What we absolutely need now is urgent action from the government. Until you deal with nine retailers who have 94.5% of food sales in Britain, you're not going to have a level playing field. Consumers have a choice. They can decide to buy cheap meat from industrial farms, or they can find farmers that really value animal welfare and the environment that we're farming in. Dad started Regen Farming for the future generations to come, and that was the most selfless act he could have done. The people who are doing this are making big sacrifices. I think the potential is absolutely huge here. These farms really can change the world. It's all about the soil, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I got my master's in early childhood. Whoops. So that is really awesome. I think it is too. Super cool. And, and it's about time people start stepping up to the plate. And uh, because we are poisoning ourselves within the ocean and our water, our two biggest needs on earth, what we need. We're putting bombs in the ocean, exploding things up. Who cares what, you know, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine. And then what else do we do at our home? We don't just do it in the ocean. Our soil is depleted. Our first six inches of soil, it's crap, plain crap. Um, and that's stuff that we got to start working on because if not, um, there's not going to be any anything left on earth. <laughs> Happy Max says now he wants a touch of the cow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if that's all you got from that. <laughs> Jeez, come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if I could, if somehow I could premiere that on his channel, that would be pretty freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. But I don't see that happening on our channel because it's only for huge audiences and movie theaters. But hey, you never know. <laughs> anyway, that's coming out in three months. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. So if when we go over stuff with uh, JJ Juby and Dr. Paula Ruff and anything repeats itself, that's imp that's really good. Because when I, how I organized this was 
I don't want them. I don't want to watch their trailer because the more times they sit, we repeat something, the more it's important for you guys to learn. Yeah. And so if we repeat stuff, that's the, there's, that means that they're important, important parts. So mm-hmm. that's good. Okay. So let's get right down to it. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. 31 people in the chat. Actually, three, three people in the chat. Boop. And let's go call Robbie from A to Z. Hey, Rams. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate you. There's welcome in Purple T Bear. Awesome. Okay. Whoop. I almost showed, showed the wrong thing there. I want to give away. I want to give it away now. I want to give out prizes. <laughs> I don't know why I feel about that all the time, but. Oh, come on. Hold on, guys. What I want is not what I want. (laughs) Okay. This doesn't work out right. Nope. Stop sharing that one. (laughs) For some reason, some things are... Not going the way I set it up. I don't know why. What happened? Uh oh. And I don't know why that happened. Excuse me, guys. I gotta quirky talk for a couple seconds. I gotta find out why this didn't go right. I don't know what you want to talk about. Talk about your seeds. <laughs> well, I could do that forever. But did you guys see my video for Sunday Fun Day? If you did, I'm really happy that you did because I did a lot. Joe was like, show some of your animals or something. And I was like, okay. So I slapped some uh, of my older videos together and whatever. And bam, I showed some of my animals here I have on the farm. And um, yeah, that that was over the summer where my leghorn literally um, hatched 20 eggs. And we didn't notice because she did it in the loft of the barn and we'd rarely go up there. And so one day my husband saw all these chicks and he's like, oh my gosh, he's like, I think I hear I peeping upstairs and he pulls out six more. So before I knew it, we had 20 chicks that she was sitting on and it was insane. I've never had so many chicks at once. It was crazy. Um, this this time of year usually is really slow for the chicks, for the birds and stuff. But since we've had unusual weather, um, I'm already starting to get lots of eggs. So I'll probably be selling eggs sometime soon. And I took a picture. I don't know if I put it on my wide family farm page or not, but I took a picture of the eggs. I got a lot of olive acres that have laid the darkest green egg that I've ever seen. So that's so super cool. I have lots of Muscovies and I've done some tests with the uh, Muscovies in the garden. And the year that I put the Muscovies in the garden and they pooped everywhere, I had the best garden year ever. It was great. <clears throat> oh, so glad, Jane Doe. Thanks for watching. Glad, glad you guys saw it. Cool. Welcome and trust in God. Welcome in. And if we missed anybody that just came on, because there's now 37 people in the chat. Sorry about that. Um, We just missed you. Okay. So I got, here it is, guys. The growing guide. It's always crooked for some reason. Still haven't figured it out. (laughs) But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's only a little slight angle. Not too much. Tilt your head just a little bit. Just just, just got a little crick in the neck. (laughs) I got to put my glasses on. <laughs> Maybe I'll turn another way. <laughs> so I have no idea why it's going like that. I really don't. It's right off word. <laughs> my word's confused. I don't know. <laughs> it's like my spelling. I'm not my spelling, but my uh, vocabulary. Okay. Kohlrabi Growing Guide. Kohlrabi is a hearty member of the Nebraska family. It was first recorded being grown in Northern Europe in 1554 and had reached North America at least by the early 1800s. The name is a German word named cabbage, coal, and a turnip with a rabbi. Kohlrabi, describing a turnip-like enlargement of stem above the soil. It, that means it's not a root vegetable. 
The leaves stand out like spokes from this edible portion. It's like an alien. It looks like an alien. It's crazy looking, which is really cool. The roundest stem, which is commonly referred to as a bulb, even though bot uh, botanically it is not a bulb. Although it is quite exotic looking. <laughs> I'm getting sexy again with my vegetables. <laughs> it is merely a different horticultural form of the same species to which common cabbage, kale, uh, broccoli, and cauliflower, uh, cauliflower belong. That is kohlrabi. And kohlrabi. Kohlrabi. Kohlrabi is an uncommon kohlrabi, baby. <laughs> kohlrabi is an uncommon yet fairly easy and quick growing vegetable that is mainly grown for its ball or globe shaped stems, <laughs> which have a mild flavor similar to broccoli or a turnip. It's very sweet, guys. It's, it's not, it does, it, when I say broccoli, I mean, people have other things like a turnip or a, or another vegetable, which is very sweet and it has like a glance of it. It doesn't really taste like broccoli. It's it's you got to taste it for yourself at least once, guys. Grow it. It's like a cabbage apple. Yeah, 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 and a little bit like carrot in there too, like the mm -hmm. crunch and like it's, it's kind of it's it's really good. You can cook kohlrabi or grate it raw into salads, and the leaves are edible too. Eat them steamed like a spinach. Kohlrabi is a good source of dietary fiber, calcium, vitamin C, and iron. Filled up with and high in protein, it can be used in recipes as an alternative to meat, and also well works uh, works well with Indian spices. Yes, yeah, spices. I like spices. Mm. Quick fat. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Reminds me, I'm gonna <laughs> give away some habanero later. <laughs> uh, quick facts. Avoid planting kohlrabi where you have grown related crops like broccoli, cauliflower, collards, kale, turnips, rutabaga, cabbage, mustard, bok choy, Brussels sprouts during the previous four years. So when you plan your garden out, know where you got to plant it because you don't want to have those insects go to your uh, veggies. You don't want those bugs. The best quality kohlrabi, the best quality kohlrabi is sweet, crisp, and juicy. Juicy. <laughs> Best growth without heat or moisture stress results in a good crop. Harvest kohlrabi when the bulb is two to three inches in width. If the bulb gets too large, it will become tough, woody, and bitter. Now, there's something to that last sentence because there are different varieties of kohlrabi. Some are now being made to be bigger, so they don't have that. Uh, they don't have that bitter taste. But for the most part, you want it like a little bigger than a baseball, but definitely smaller than a softball. Yeah. Health benefits. Kohlrabi is very nutritionist and offers a various health benefits. It's high in antioxidants. Kohlrabi contains. Now, guys, if I say words wrong, just go with it. It's okay. It's okay. I need you, Judge Juby, to read this part. And you know what? Probably part of her life is part of this, so <laughs> she can make fun of me later. Anyway, kohlrabi contains a wide array of antioxidants such as vitamin C, anthocyanins, isocyanates, and glucinolates. Hey, that was sounds good. That sounded good. Hey, All right, awesome. <laughs> go with that. These plant Whoa! <laughs> I didn't mumble too bad. These plant compounds protect your cells against free radical damage that may otherwise increase your uh, risk of disease. The skin of the purple, purple kohlrabi is particularly high in anthocyanins, mm. a type of flavonoid that gives vegetables and fruit a red, purple, or blue color. All color varieties of kohlrabi are high in isocyanates, <laughs> glucinates, which are powerful antioxidants associated with lower risk of certain cancers, heart disease, inflammation. So it also promotes a healthy gut. I mean, so many people have healthy gut problems. Well, they don't have a healthy gut. They have a terrible gut. But yeah. look at my gut. It's huge and it's unhealthy. Kohlrabi is a good source. So I should be eating this because it promotes a healthy gut. It's a good source of both soluble and insoluble fiber. The former is a water-soluble that helps maintain healthy blood sugar and cholesterol levels. What more? What, what's more, fiber is a main full source of healthy gut bacteria. It may also lower your risk of heart disease. High glucinates intake is linked to lower risk of heart disease due to compound ability to widen blood vessels and reduce inflammation. 
Reducing inflammation usually means you're reducing cancer risk in your body. Uh, support a healthy immune system. The nutrients of kohlrabi may support your immune system. This vegetable is high in vitamin B6, which is important in many functions, including protein metabolism, red blood cell development, and immune function. Vitamin B6 is involved with the production of white blood cells and T cells, which are types of immune cells that fight foreign substances and are key to a healthy immune system. Mm. The efficiency in this nutrient is linked to a weakened immune system. I just this- saw um, online where somebody did a healthy version of um, ranch dressing. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to do a help, my healthy version of ranch dressing, and I'm going to grow a ton of kurabi for my health. <laughs> I mean, the information is like we should, we everybody should be eating this. Yeah. Not, I mean, nobody grows it. Nobody. If you like cabbage, you're going to love kurabi. It's so delicious. It is so delicious, and it's perfect, like on a veggie tray, like yum. Yeah, sorry. Um, I didn't mean to interrupt, but it's all right. I was on my last sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's it's okay. And welcome in, Rebel Canners. Welcome in. And there's don't you know, don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know? <laughs> Additionally, kohlrabi is an excellent source of vitamin C, which may support white blood cell function and ultimately strengthen your immune system. Now, I just listed this here. But and my gardener has two varieties. They have the white Vienna and a purple purple Vienna, and they are both sixty days. But here, recommended kohlrabi varieties. There are many good broccoli varieties for sale in local garden outlets. Go see catalog. Well, so this don't. I made a mistake. It wasn't supposed to be broccoli there. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so quick star forty days, Grand Duke fifty days, white Vienna or purple Vienna, uh, Vienna uh, sixty days. 60 days, have excellent production, eating quality, and flavor. Companion plantain. So companion plantain, what is good? What is good? So you have onions, plant the next crabbies, keep the pest away. Garlic deters pests and bugs. Shallots loosens the soil. Cucumbers provide shade to your kohlrabis. Beets, they loosen the soil. Cabbage improves soil conditions. Cauliflower loosens the soil. Broccoli improves soil conditions. Kale improves soil conditions. Brussels spouts, they deter pests. Well, that's because when the bugs go to your um, <laughs> kohlrabi, they look at the Brussels sprouts. I want to go to the Brussels sprouts. Man, they aphids. And they hide them. inside your Brussels sprouts, and you have to soak them in salt water. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, honey, going to that kohlrabi. That's ugly looking. That's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> And mustard greens deter aphids and spider mites. Celery to keep away pests. Lettuce to ground cover to keep the soil mo- moist. And potatoes to loosen the soil. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> and uh, why is it good for thyme? Well, it enhances the flavor of your kohlrabis. Who knew that? Who knew that? So the thyme enhances the flavor of your kohlrabis. You gotta, we got to remember that. that. I got so much time. It's crazy. Time, time. time. Yummy. That's hmm. let me see. So why do I need companion plants to grow kohlrabi? While it is possible to grow kohlrabi without any other plants next to them, you will just not be get the same results. Good companion plants are crucial for optimal growth behavior of kohlrabi. Optimal growth behavior of your kohlrabi since they can serve as ground cover, improve soil conditions, track pollinators, provide shade, and make keep make. Uh, keep away pest and disease. Now, oh, this is a repeat. Oh no, I didn't, I didn't erase that part. <laughs> now, what bad companions? Why is it bad? Well, a strawberries attack uh, attract aphids. Beans slow down the growth of kohlrabis. Tomatoes inhibit the growth of your kohlrabis. You don't want the huge one, guys. You don't want the huge kohlrabis. Melons that take away too much sunlight. Same thing with pumpkins and sunflowers. So do not plant those. Soils uh, kohlrabis prefer a fertile, well-drained soil, rich in organic matter for best growth. Just like most uh, things in a the garden, they want that well-drained organic matter in there. Soil prep. Before plant and determine fertilizer needs with a soil test, and then follow with recommendations given from the test report. I'm going to say that for most vegetables in these growing guides, it's important to test your soil. 
If fertilizer applications are war warranted, work the fertilizer into the top six inches of soil. Improve your soil by adding well-rotted manure or compost in spring. Do not use fresh manure as it may contain harmful bacteria, increase weed problems. So that's very important, guys. You have uh, the only kind of fertilizer you could just put out there is your rabbit poo. And so like Corky got a rabbit. Why? For the poo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't eat rabbit. I got a rabbit because Rupert poops a lot. And so Rupert supplying my wonderful garden with tons of poo. Speaking of poo, I put so much rabbit poop on my garlic that I just planted. Um, we did that yesterday. So a bunch of rabbit poop was good for it. <laughs> good old rabbit. Silly rabbit. <laughs> um, yeah, so just make sure if you have your chicken manure, do not put it right in the garden. Uh, make sure it sits for a while. Um, a neutral soil pH of... 0 to 7.5 is ideal. Now, planting. Coral became grown from seed or transplants. Seed should be planted a quarter, a half an inch deep and thin to the final stand when plants have three or four true leaves. So that's very important when you transplant. Don't make sure. If it's less, you don't want to do that. Um, so make sure it gets to those three or four tr uh, true leaves. Make sure you leave it outside a week. Uh, gradually or uh, get you get it used to the sun. So that's important. So mm -hmm. you don't want to just put your vegetables to get burned out there. Even right. if it's in the spring, those plants are still virgins to the sun. So <laughs> make sure you, uh, you know, get those hours out there first before you plant them. Even if it's really cold outside, the sun is, the sun's rays are, they're, they're strong. They're a lot stronger than your grow lights. That's for sure. Uh, plants removed that thinning can be transplanted to your grown area. Transplants can be used to provide earlier harvest. Transplants should have four to six other uh, mature leaves and well-developed root system before planting. Generally, five to six weeks are required to grow transplants to it this size. Planting or space and seeded or transplanted uh, kohlrabi should be placed uh, space six inches uh, between plants in a row with about uh, one foot apart kohlrabi. Grows best when the temperatures do not exceed 75 degrees. Young plants may be damaged by hard frost. Mature plants will be will flower if the average temper, temperature, again, this is mature, guys. Mature plants will flower if average temperatures during growth are less than 40. Plants may be planted one, one to two weeks before the last frost day for growing area. Seeded kohlrabi may be planted at the same time. For full mature and kohlrabi, select early mature and culti cultivars and plant 50 days before the anticipated maturity date. The maturity date can be timed two to three weeks before the first frost. High, sum high summer temperatures reduce growth, decrease quality, uh, cause the enlarging stems to produce tough, become uh, tough and woody. In hot areas, it is best to grow kohlrabi as a spring or autumn crop. Now, water in. Now, most people don't water like they should. They water too less or they weigh too much. So it's, very, it's very important to understand how much water you got to put into your garden. So water kohlrabi frequently since roots are shallow. Uh, allow one to two inches of water or required per week. Use strip irrigation if possible to conserve water. Applying mulch around the plants also helps conserve moisture and reduces weed growth. Moisture fluctuations will cause the stems to become tough and woody. Keep kohlrabi watered during dry spells to ward, avoid plants from bolting uh, before the stems are properly formed. An inch of water, this is very, this I found this pretty interesting. An inch of water in wet in wet sandy soil to a depth of 10 inches. Ooh, I really screwed that up. So if you have wet sandy soil, if you do one inch, it goes to a depth of 10 inches. So that's pretty interesting because the soil, the soil gradually goes down 10 inches in sandy soil. A heavy clay soil, well, that, mean, that means it goes to like six inches. So if your soil is sandy, water more than once a week. Oh, I really screwed that up. Sorry, guys. But if you have sand, you got to water more. So go on deep. So that's what that meant. And as you guys companion plant and or practice crop rotation, 
avoid planting kohlrabi where you have grown related crops. We discussed this before with the broccoli, cauliflower, collards, kale, turnip, rutabaga, cabbage, mustard, bok choy, Brussels sprouts during the previous four years. Fertilization, I like using trifecta. Hey, where can we get trifecta, Quirky? Uh, at my gardener? <laughs> wow, at my gardener. Wow. And you know what? If you spend $18, <laughs> you get free shipping on Trifecta. Really? It's free? And you know what? If you use grow big, hashtag grow big, you get 10% off. Ooh, I know. Boom. <laughs> like you guys don't understand. I got a ton of seeds for 20 bucks. A ton of them. It's awesome. So welcome in Riverdale Gardens. Good to see you. There's 40 people in the chat. Thank you guys for all for coming. Uh, mulches and row covers. Plastic mulches can help conserve water, reduce weeding, and allow earlier plant and, and maturity, especially with transplants. Fabric covers are used to protect seedings and transplants from frost, insect, and insect pests. Apply organic mulches when temperatures increase above 80s, 80 degrees. Organic mulches such as grass, clippings, straw, shredded newspaper help cool the soil, reduce water stress, and help control weeds. So, you know, one of the biggest problems I have always had was with weeds. Yeah. And when you use these row covers, guys, it's a game changer how much more time you can spend on your garden. So um, I've been out there where all I do for the whole entire weekend is weed. Who wants to do that? Spend time with your family. Put a row cover down. You'll weed a lot less. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Let's see what else I have here. Harvest. Kohlrabi has the mildest and best flavor when small. Older kohlrabi tends to be tough and woody and may have, have an off flavor, except in some newer varieties such as Gigante and Gosek that do not develop woody fibers in a large stem. You may begin harvest when the bulbs are about an inch in diameter and continue harvesting until the bulb reaches maturity size to that, for that variety. Pull the entire plant out of the ground or cut it off the ground. Now, I'm going to get back to this next, but I want to show you guys a video because you guys probably seen enough of me reading right now. So let's bring on Julianna's video. Juby. What do you know? What do you know about Karabi? Well, we're going to find out from Juliana what she knows. If I could find it. <laughs> there it is. Boom. Boom. So this is from Juliana, J -J 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 Juby. Go ahead and check out her page. Make sure you should subscribe to her. Did you know Kohlrabi edition? Did you know that kohlrabi comes from the German word for cabbage, coal, and turnip, rube? The kohlrabi bulb sits slightly above the ground and is an enlarged plant stem. Did you know kohlrabi can be a substitute for potatoes? It has similar texture and mild taste for making it a versatile option for mashed kohlrabi, kohlrabi fries, or even kohlrabi gratin. Did you know that kohlrabi is rich in antioxidants such as glucosinolates and phytochemicals? These compounds help protect your cells from oxidative damage and reduce the risk of chronic diseases. Did you know that kohlrabi leaves can be used as a natural pest repellent? Planting kohlrabi near other vulnerable plants can help deter pests with a strong scent. Even just placing the leaves in your garden beds or rows can help. Did you know that kohlrabi can be stored for weeks if stored properly in a cool, dry place? It can last several weeks, making it a convenient, long-lasting addition to your pantry. Did you know that even the leaves of kohlrabi are edible? That's right. They are packed with nutrients and vitamins. Add them to your salads, saute them with some garlic, or even shred them to add to your coleslaw. Kohlrabi can be grown year-round in many places. It thrives in cool weather. It can be cultivated in warmer climates during the cooler months. That means you can enjoy kohlrabi's deliciousness regardless of the season. Mm. Did you know that kohlrabi was first discovered by a European botanist in 1554? But by the end of the 16th century, it was known in Germany, England, Italy, Spain, Tripoli, and even the Eastern Mediterranean. It has been said to be grown first on a field scale level in Ireland in 1734. Did you know? 
Did you know the largest kohlrabi was grown by Scott Robb of the USA and it weighed 96 pounds, 15 ounces in the year 2006? Did you know that kohlrabi can be harvested in just 55 days after planting? Why not put it in your spring garden? Did you know it was easy to grow this fast maturing crop? Start seeds indoors six weeks before the last frost or direct sow two weeks prior to the last frost outdoors. And then again in midsummer, harvest the entire plant when the bulb stem reaches about three inches in diameter. Did you know that kohlrabi comes in different colors? Most people are familiar with the light green version, but it also comes in white and purple. The purple has a slightly spicier taste compared to the green, adding a little kick to your dishes. And last but not least, did you know that the nickname for kohlrabi is Sputnik after the Russian space satellite, given their similar shapes? Did <laughs> you know? I didn't know. I had to know. I love that. Who knew? Who knew? Only Juliana knew. <laughs> Sputnik. Hey, Mr. Sputnik. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, Juliana. That was awesome. Well, well done. I, I appreciate all your effort that you're doing to make help this out, and um, I think it's it's really awesome. Ninety six pounds. Whoop! I just lost ninety six pounds, y'all. Ninety six. Imagine that. Imagine bringing that inside. Hey, hon, hook this up. <laughs> Hello, Butler Family Farm. Thanks for coming in. Welcome in. Welcome in. Thank you for coming, Jerry. You know what? Since people are here, I want to give away something. I wasn't going to do this right away, but we're going to come back and give away stuff, too. But I just want to give away some seeds. <laughs> Y'all, he's an itch. It's an itch for giving something away. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, I have no idea what I'm giving away, but <laughs> let's see what I got here. These are from Baker's Creek, by the way. Ooh. Ooh. That way. Let's see what else I have. Nice. I've been like this all day, by the way, so it's okay. I just want to do something, give something out. I wa I've been watching YouTube too much today and too many giveaways, and I feel like I'm not giving anything away. I feel like I had to do something. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now that's a radish. And we're going to give out those M.I. Gardener seeds later on, too. Ooh. <laughs> so... Okay, just be patient with me, guys. <laughs> okay. And we're going to go back to the growing gun in a second. So let me see. Hashtag. Kohlrabi. Oh, if you type in hashtag Kohlrabi, you can win. Look at all those karabis out there. Let's look at them. So right now there's four and climbing. Just make sure you got there's 16 so far. Just make sure will you guys email me right away because I really don't have the time to wait. The duties because that's when I get really behind. Everything is out except for four weeks ago. <laughs> I'm sorry about the people from four weeks ago. Everybody else is giving out. So there's 27 entries so far. This is pretty awesome. These are all from these last four from Baker's Creek. The rest we do today is from um and my gardener. Mm -hmm.
I love seeing Jersey Twister. I, I just it's just, it feels like I want to say something funny. It's like a it's a twister. It's a twister. You know, <laughs> just forty two people in the chat now. Dragon Cat uh, retype. This is like a spelling bee. <laughs> how many? How many people has ever spelled Kohlrabi before on paper? Not many. I'm Give surprised I spell it correctly, but I do usually. Oh, by the way, don't ever talk it into your spell check because it'll say, I say Kohlrabi and then it pops up Kohlrabi. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> That's too funny. So I never talk to text with it because it will say call Robbie. And I'm like, who's Robbie? <laughs> That's hilarious. So there's 43 people in the chat, but 31 entries. So either somebody spelt it wrong or, uh, yeah, so 31, stay in the 31. Let's give it a go. Okay, so for the first one is the mustard. Let's draw it. Who's going to win? Who's going to win the mustard? Mike! <laughs> I'm not going to say it anymore. It's just Mike. I gave up. I give up. I'm afraid to say it because now I'm saying it like Joe. Congratulations, Mike. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, draw again. Here we go. This is for the okra. Ja, 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 Juby. Congratulations, Juliana. And here's the huge radish. Huge. Mokin Honey Heritage Farms. Congratulations. And the Grandiflora mix, the whatever, how this is. <laughs> I'm not going to give it a try. Salpiglosis or something. Shawnee Shave. Yeah. Shawnee. Chad. <laughs> there we go. Shawnee, you won. Don't forget. To send your um, email with your name, address, and your prizey one to Joe. So you can send that out. Awesome, guys. That was awesome. Wow. The, all of a sudden, we got 49 people in the chat. Boom. Boom. <laughs> so, so let's go finish our growing guide. Then we're going to have Dr. Paula go on and go on from there. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Oh, this went all the way up front. Now, oh, not 12. Okay. Why did I do that? Okay. Serving suggest uh, suggestions. Young kohlrabi leaves may be cooked like other greens. The bulbs can be eaten raw in salads or can be cooked like a turnip. Very young tender bulbs can be used without peeling, but larger ones should be peeled. Because it's almost has like if you leave it like really big, it has like you don't want the outside. The outside is really gross when it gets. Really I usually big. peel it with a potato peeler. Mm -hmm. It's hard though sometimes, but I peel it with a potato peeler and then I chop it up. However, and then I dip it in ranch dressing and eat it. <laughs> and like I said, it never gets to the pan any at any time. <laughs> the bulbs can be. Hollowed out and stuffed with a vegetable. How many Ooh. people have ever done that before? That's Ooh. a good idea. I you never know what's done really that good is that spinach dip that you can make. Mm -hmm. Stuffed with the, that with the spinach dip with the cream cheese and the spinach and stuff. Oh, that sounds mm. so good. Yeah. Oh, I could really taste that right now. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> We're gonna yeah. make it on this <laughs> We're trusting God when we have him here. <laughs> we love it. 
The peeled flesh can be sliced, diced, grated, and used in recipes calling for radishes. If added to slaw, lightly salt it first. Let stand for several minutes and squeeze to remove any excess excess water before adding dressing. When steamed or boiling kohlrabi, peel after cooking. Kohlrabi is a good source of vitamin C and potassium. It is low in sodium and calories. One cup of diced and cooked kohlrabi contains 40 calories and 140% of the RDA for vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Now, storage. You can store kohlrabi for months in cold, uh, moist conditions, 36 to, uh, and 95% humidity. It is hard to create these conditions outside of commercial storage facilities. In a home refrigerator, kohlrabi will keep its quality for about two weeks. You could also freeze kohlrabi. Now, managing pests and diseases. Many things can affect kohlrabi stems, stems and leaves. Changes in physical appearance and plant health can be caused by the environment, like plant diseases, insects, wildlife. In order to address what you're seeing, it is important to make a correct diagnosis. I have yet to have anything really affect my kohlrabi. Um, the only thing I've really had issues with is the flea beetles eating the leaves. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I've never had any disease or anything else on them. Um, especially if you get the purple Vienna, you get less of that because bugs don't like that purpley stuff. So, and if, and if you don't use the step, if you don't, uh, the stems, if you don't plan to eat them, put some surround on it. If you see bug damage, it's organic. You're not going to eat it anyway. You'll have a healthier, you know, more leaves on a plant, the better for the, uh, everything you grow. So, yeah. Um, and plus, they're like I said, they're alien looking like. They go. They're going to go to another vegetable if you set it out to them. They're not going to. And if it's purple, they're more disease resistant. Yeah. Uh, weak uh, dying plants could be a symptom of cabbage root fly, which lays eggs around the roots of the plant. They these hatch into maggot-like larvae that eat the roots. Caterpillars on leaves are those of the large and small white butterflies that we see flying around. I know. Which can when I was a new gardener, I just, oh, honey, look at the white butterflies. They're so pretty. And then you don't realize that they're really laying eggs and crap on your, on your cabbage. So now I go out there with a, um electric fly swatter. <laughs> <laughs> Except they know better. You go there, you're ready to go hit it. Then all of a sudden they just, whoop, they flip up, they go up, and you can't, you can't get them. They're like smart like that. Or anytime you go around one, they just fly higher. <laughs> but you can get some. Use that electric fly swatter. It's good. Uh, uh, caterpillars on leaves are those of the large and white small butterflies, which can remove and transfer to a sacrificial crop like a nest nesterniums. Uh, tiny holes in the leaves are caused by those flea beetles, which cause no real damage to the plant. Clouds of white flies are caused by white fly. Uh, those suckers are hard to get rid of, I always found. These mainly concentrate in the leaves, so the swollen kohlrabi stems shouldn't be affected. But man, they, man, they, you, keep, you don't do anything to get rid of them. Man, they multiply really fast. Yeah. Uh, swollen and distorted roots and yellowing leaves are caused by club root. Avoiding, avoid growing brassic brassicas in the same soil for several years. Regularly adding lime to acidic sauce can pre prevent this fungal disease taking hold. Alcinaria is a common disease that causes spots on the leaves. Black rot causes yellow triangles on the edge of the leaves and causes kohlrabi to rot. Now, pest management. Kohlrabi, kohlrabi generally has a few insect or disease problems. Like I said, caterpillars, uh, may infect, infest the plant, but their feeding on the leaves doesn't affect yield unless populations are very high. These caterpillars can be controlled by hand-picking chemical sprays, which I don't like using chemical sprays, or applications of BT. Yellow club root, black rot, and downy mildew are a few cabbage family diseases that may affect kohlrabi, but are not common in the home garden. Plant disease-resistant varieties when available and maintain vigorous plants. Avoid handling the plants when they are wet 
and remove any infected plants. That's also, guys, when he's, this is for the most part, if you have a, anything that's wet, you don't want to touch plant to plant because you're just putting your disease. If you want plants infected and it's wet, and you touch another plant, you're just trans transporting right. all kinds of diseases to each plant. It's very easy to do that. Uh, flea beetles chew small holes in the leaves. Seedlings are most vulnerable to injury when, uh, from this feeding. Imported cabbage worm, cabbage looper, diamondback moth larvae feed on the leaves. Young seedlings and tramp plants are more, most vulnerable to injury from this feeding. Cabbage maggots feed on the roots, injuring the uh, plants, sometimes killing them. Okay, so some food facts. We're almost done here. Last two pages. Uh, kohlrabi serving suggestions. Kohlrabi can be served raw, grated, sprinkled with salt, or cooked. Kohlrabi can be steamed, added to soups, stews, or stir fry. To serve raw, peel and slice or cut into strips, uh, cubes, or wedges with crudettes. Julienne kohlrabi for a vegetable or a meat salads. Grate or shred to add a add to a slaw or toss with a remoulade sauce, mayonnaise, mustard, capers, chopped gherkins, herbs, anchovies. Oh, not me, the anchovies. <laughs> Cook kohlrabi uh, flesh like you would turnips or celery. Boil and serve tender crisp. You may want to. Uh, change the water twice when boiling for a lighter flavor. Peel and steam when uh, served with lemon juice or melted butter. Add whole peeled kohlrabi to braised dishes and stews and cook for about 20 minutes. You can add these leaves halfway through. Or you can roast the kohlrabi chunks in a pan with the meats or poultry. Cut the flesh into slices or wedges and add to a Chinese stir fry or Indian curry. You can combine peel kohlrabi with potatoes when making scalloped potatoes, or you know what? Use a dip. Uh, you could dip kohlrabi slices and in sticks into uh, a tempura batter and deep fry them. You could trim, scrub, boil, whole or slice uh, for about 20, 30 minutes, then drain, peel, and serve with melted butter or some kind of white sauce or mashed. Kohlrabi leaves can be cooked like a spinach. Trim and boil the leaves until tender about two or three minutes and drain them aside and serve sprinkle cooked leaves with lemon uh, juice and a and some butter and the purple kohlrabi may change color during cooking and become a whitish color you know what i've always wanted to do is i've always wanted to shred it and then um kind of like make it into a slaw and then mm -hmm. i don't know put it on a hot dog or something <laughs> Give it a try. Yeah. You never know what you can like. You'd be surprised. I mean, it's funny because when you uh, welcome in uh, Lisa Word, welcome to the show. It's good to see you. Thank thank oh, you for God. coming. And you guys, uh, uh, anybody's new in the chat, make make them feel welcome. We appreciate that. Um, it's always good to feel love because, you know, sometimes if you go in and chat and nobody ever talks to you, you're like, sometimes you don't want to, you don't want to be there. So hopefully uh, everybody feels welcome to be here. Hey, Wickershire. And yes, I have pickled kohlrabi. I got like 10 jars of it in my refrigerator right now. It's pretty good. I love that. Wow. After wearing glasses all day, been taking them off. Now my eyes are like, yeah. whoa. I'm, st I'm still getting used to wearing glasses. I'm really, <laughs> I don't like, I definitely don't like wearing them. So, um. Just wonder, everybody in the chat, is who is Sorry. who is going to grow kohlrabi this year? I, I'd love to know. I don't know. So I'm say yes to. or no in the chat. I want to. Welcome in, Bert. Welcome hey, in, Bert. Bert. So yes or no if you're going to grow kohlrabi. I think I it's can't. delicious. Like, even if you can't plant a bunch of it, plant like five or six of them and see if you like it. I guarantee you you're going to like it. If you like cabbage, you're going to love kohlrabi. Yeah. The way I look at it, if you like cabbage, uh, carrots, anything from the Nebraska family, basically, you'll absolutely love it because it's mild. It's not like... It's not like you get this taste of it. It's like so strong. It's a very, it's a lot more sweeter. 
So we got a hi. Welcome in, Denise. Never had it before. I'm telling you, just you could easily put it in a pot too. So to this is something that's very, and you know what's so interesting is when was the first time you ever seen it in the store? Um, actually, the first time I saw it in the store was at an organic place that's not too far from my house, and I ended up buying it because I didn't know what it tasted like then. Oh, here, mm. you brought it in. This is my pickled karabi. Oh, look at that. Thanks, babe. But yeah, um, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, that's awesome. But yeah, so I got it. I found it in the store. And I'm really weird about root vegetables in the store because you don't know what people are growing it with. But it, it was organic. So I peeled it up and I, it was freaking delicious. That was my first experience because I wanted to kind of taste it before I started growing it. And I was surprised that they even had it in the store, um, to be honest, but they did. And um, it was it was really good. And so we've been growing ever since. And then I saw the purple. Well, I love purple cabbage, especially like in a salad. You know, for some reason, it's just I love that extra crunchy whatever. It's so delicious. And the purple is just as good. So why not? Oh, my Welcome God. Everybody. Howie. Thanks for coming in. Oh, and I just saw it. I'm a dork. I just saw it. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. I haven't seen you in forever. We miss you. Yeah, I miss him the first thing in the morning. <laughs> that was my first thing in the morning. That, you know what? That's how I met Dr. Paula Ruffin. Yeah. Well, I'm in Howie's channel. I've seen her on, and Howie's talking about her, and I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then Gil, uh, Camp Patton Family Compounds, hey, you should have her on. I'm like, I just wanted to say, I already we, thought about we that. We're talking about Howie today. He's like, because we were talking about my food forest, and he's like, we're going to, he's like, I'm going to get vining vegetables. And he's like, I'm going to grow them in the food forest and have them grow up the trees. And I'm like, okay, Howie. <laughs> that's what I told him. I was like, okay, Howie. And he's like, yeah, that's where I got it from. <laughs> it made me laugh. <laughs> Howie's awesome. What a resource. What a what a resource of information he has. Love it. Okay, so since I talked about Dr. Dr. Paula, I'm gonna bring her video on. Ooh. So let's see what she has to say. We are all familiar with cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli, but there's another member. Oh, we can't hear it. You can't hear it? No. We even gave it a second okay. look because you didn't know what it was and you had no idea what to do with it, even if you did buy it and take it home. And this is kohlrabi. In today's video, I'm hoping to change everything that you know, or maybe even don't know about this lesser known member of the brassica family. Kohlrabi is incredibly nutrient dense and you can eat every part of it, the leaves, the stem, and the bulb itself. Many people will describe its flavor and texture like a cross between a broccoli stem and jicama, but just a little bit sweeter. And much like its family members, it is very high in fiber. Anytime we can get natural sources of fiber in our diets, it will actually help to improve our gut function. So many people have digestive issues and this vegetable could really benefit them. The fiber in it will actually help to feed the beneficial bacteria, which will help you to absorb nutrients and even help promote more regular bowel movements. Fiber also helps with satiety. So if you are looking to lose weight and break your cravings, snacking on kohlrabi cooked or raw could be a great way to curb your appetite and help you achieve your weight loss goals. It is also a champion when it comes to vitamin C. In fact, it's one of the vegetables that is most high in vitamin C. And of course, we can all use a little bit more of that as we come into cold and flu season. The nutrients in kohlrabi actually help to support liver and kidney function. And what that means for us is that as we are exposed daily to all the toxic chemicals in our environment, from the air to our water, to ingredients in our food, to skincare products that we use, these nutrients will help our liver and our kidneys to filter and detoxify these harmful chemicals out of our bodies, thereby reducing inflammation and actually helping protect us against chronic diseases like autoimmune issues and even cancers. 
Kohlrabi is packed with phytochemicals. These are actually compounds that help protect the plant against viruses, fungi, and parasites. But they also can have a similar benefit on human health as well. Phytochemicals are potent antioxidants that help protect your body and your cells from all the environmental stresses and toxins. That protection actually helps to decrease your risk of chronic diseases. Research has shown us that the phytochemical content of kohlrabi actually helps to fend off things like diabetes and cancers. But when it comes to cancers, kohlrabi goes one step further. Much like its cruciferous brothers and sisters, Kohlrabi contains indole 3 carbonyl and sulforaphane, which have been shown to have a profound impact on cancers, especially reproductive cancers like breast and cervical. As I mentioned before, this powerful immune-boosting food can help improve your health in so many ways, and it can actually be a really good mobile snack. So I encourage you to take it on the road, cooked or raw, and help keep you from falling prey to unhealthy snacks in convenience stores. I hope this video has inspired you just a little bit to step out of your comfort zone and try something you've never tried before. And who knows, you might even impress some friends with your newfound delicious and nutritious snack at a party. Let me know what you think. Have you had kohlrabi before? How do you like to eat it? Leave me a comment below. As always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you on the next one. Thank you, Dr. Paula. Awesome, like usual. So, uh, gosh, go check out her channel. I kind of just skimmed by that, but I think she was at 980 subs. And thank you for everyone that has subscribed to her. I really appreciate that. Our uh, goal was try to get her a 1,000 by the new year and 980. So she needs 20 more to go. If you haven't subscribed, go check her out. And uh, you, you'll, she'll really help you out in some way. And if you have any problems, just ask her. She'll try to help you out. Okay, so before we go into our growing guide, Corky, I'm in one of those moods today. I really am. I just want to give away seeds. <laughs> so it's a good thing that you have lots of seeds. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a lot of seeds. I already got my stuff planned already, so it's like uh, okay. So let me. Uh, I have to go backwards. Hold on, guys. One second. Okay. We're going to use hashtag food forest. That's short for food forest permaculture. <laughs> So to, we're going to give out four this time. We're going to give out a, a flox of twinkles. <laughs> we're going to give away twinkles, Corky. Twinkles. Oh, I like twinkles. Not tinkles. We're going to give, twinkles. Then we're going to give away some mustard. Mustard. Ooh. Then a poppy. Two poppies. One a poppy. Then another poppy. Mm. Got to give. We'll start with the poppies. Okay, let me write this down. Make sure you guys win. Make sure you email me right away. My gosh, look at all these people. Thank you. Peace, love, and crochet with DJ. Welcome in. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in, guys. We didn't say hi to you before. Well, hello. <laughs> well, it's saddle butt. So we got the white. Just keep on leaving those comments. It's pretty awesome. There is 26 entries. Make sure you spelled it right. All right. Oh, thanks for coming in, John. Awesome. Welcome in Saddlebutt. That cracks me up every time I see that name, too. <laughs> that this. is Hottie Too Hottie cracks me up. <laughs> Welcome in, Kalen. Welcome in. Okay, guys, we're going to give it a go. So we got 
and John Brinkworth. Welcome in, John. We'll wait for – oh, John already did it. So to cream – a poppy to cream peony. There we go. Let's draw it. Make sure you guys, when you guys email me, let me know exactly what you want. Happy Mac! Congratulations, Happy Mac. You are a winner. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. This is our next one. Lilac Pom Pom Poppy. By the way, their poppies are gorgeous. Ooh. Susan! Susan! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Boom! You just won! Congratulations, Susan! Congratulations, Susan. There we go. Ooh. I always want to say wasabi! <laughs> That's some mustard. Kimchi. kimchi! If you say it really fast, it sounds like kimchi. Kimchi. No, you don't want me to say anything fast. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Twinkles. Who's going to win the Twinkles? <sighs> Shawnee, oh. yeah, you're a winner tonight, girl. Winner, winner. Awesome. So congratulations to the winners. And after, the, well, we're going to talk about the MI Gardner seat packets now. So I'm going to talk about MI Gardner. Ooh. No, like you know, you get you get you get order seeds on your phone from MI Gardner. Yeah, he has an app. Did you know that? Isn't that awesome? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Make oh, it easy. by the way, I was super ex okay. I was on, I've been on at my gardener site for two days in a row because I'm trying to figure out what I didn't get the first time. Like, you know, and as I went back this morning from last night, there was stuff that was sold out. So if you all want seeds, you need to get over there now because they were literally selling out within like a day. So. And, and you know what? He has a special and he told us before the rest of the, before the world. When he turns 30, 30 new seat packets are coming out. And he had that in his newsletter. But you guys knew that first before anybody else, by the way, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But um, he's going to give out um, – he's going to be selling rose bush – not rose bushes, strawberry plants and potatoes, I think, and a whole bunch of other stuff soon too. So, I mean, hey, you spend $18, <laughs> free shipping, and hashtag grow big, get another 10% off. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about some of the seed packets we're giving away today. Let me find them first. Oh, there we go. I got them. So these are going to go out to somebody. So we got the cantaloupe. Ooh. Minnesota oh, it's midget. a Minnesota midget? Oh. It's a Minnesota midget. Then we got butter crunch lettuce. Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Hibernero pepper. Ooh, yummy. No Kohlrabi! Ooh. And some okra. Ooh, red burgundy. So, let's get talking about these. So, let me turn up, find a page. Hopefully, it's still there. <laughs> Everybody wants these seeds. They're like, that's mine. I'm going to expand this out. Ooh, okay. Hold on. You sent this to me. Let me uh, get it on my phone so I can read it better. Boom. Okay. So our first one is the red burgundy okra. Okay. This is a gorgeous variety. It's just as tasty as it is beautiful. Whether you love okra, okra, I can't talk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whether you love okra or not, this deep colored statement plant 
is a must grow in your garden or pollinator garden. Deep red pods are uh, complemented by the bright green leaves on a plant that will give high yields throughout the summer. Pods are tender and delicious. When cooked, the leaves turn purple. That's pretty cool. Um, really cool. You want to start it indoors about four to five weeks before the last frost or direct so after the last frost. Um, days to germinate are seven to 14 days. Germination temperature is 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 to 29 degrees Celsius. Days to maturity are 55 to 60 days. Plant spacing is 12 to 18 inches and plant size is six inches, inch pods. So they get pretty big. It's a half inch deep. Um, you want to plant it about half inch deep. It requires full sun and it will bring in the pollinators. And if anybody's ever grown okra, they have like these beautiful flowers. It almost looks like a tropical plant. It's so gorgeous. With all okra, you want to harvest the pods young to keep them tender and avoid woody texture. Use a sharp knife to cut the pods and the stem to avoid damage damage to your plant. And yes, um, if they're really large, you definitely don't want to eat them. They'll be like kind of stringy and gross. Now, okra is also the only member of the Milo family, Milo family, which includes cotton, hibiscus, and hollyhock to bear edible fruit. Just a little note. It gets a beautiful, almost like um, a mushroom flower, like, um, oh my gosh, uh, yeah, flower on it. It's It looks tropical. It's it's beautiful. If you don't eat karabi, or karabi, if you don't eat okra, you could at least, like, plant it for the flowers, because the flowers are beautiful. All right, so this is the white Vienna karabi. <clears throat> A pre-1860s heirloom, great white Vienna karabi, produces a bulb just above the soil in light green color on the extender with a bright white center. Crisp in texture with a mild sweet cabbage-like flavor. The cabbage flavor flesh is white and delicious cooked or raw. It is typically used in a substitute uh, for turnip recipes. Excellent source of vitamin C. Um, you want to start it indoors about four to six weeks before the last frost, direct so after the last frost. Uh, days to germinate are seven to 10 days. Germination temperature is 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 to 19 degrees Celsius. Days of maturity are 55 to 60 days. Plant spacing, you want to plant these about four to six inches and plant size is about 12 to 18 inches. Um, you want to plant these about a fourth of an inch deep. They require full sun. They are cold tolerant. They're kind of like a cabbage as far as that's concerned. Um, and you want to start these like four weeks uh, before the last frost. You want to harvest karabi once the bulb reaches the size of a tennis ball, approximately three inches in diameter. When desired size is close to a mindful, uh, to be mindful of the weather, um, excess water from a heavy rainfall can cause karabi to split. So harvest your crop before a rain. And um, yeah, that's where I always get it mixed up is I always um, wait too long to harvest my karabi and then it kind of gets woody or gross or whatever. So if you do, just make sure you're on top of that and, um, you know, make sure you pay attention to how, how big it's getting and then cut it and eat it. But that sounds delicious. Yeah, I really hope you guys give this uh, go to MI Gardener body seeds. I mean, it's very it's so good. We wouldn't keep on saying if we didn't think it was good. Um, this awesome, awesome plant to grow, vegetable to grow. Next one is Habanero Caribbean Red Pepper. Yay! Okay, so the Habanero um, Caribbean Red is an absolute staple in the garden of anyone who loves adding pure heat to the recipes. Heavy yields of tiny peppers develop heat intensity as they mature. Handle these with caution. Yes, this is a really extremely hot pepper. I wouldn't say it's the hottest pepper in the world, but it's pretty hot. And I like flavor and habaneras have some of the best flavor as far as that's concerned. So if you want to, you could chop it up into little pieces, throw it in your taco meat or like put it in your chili 
um, it gives an extra little added boost. Now I wouldn't put like five or six of these in your chili. I would put like one. <laughs> so, so you can get kind of a taste of it. And yeah, you know, I've had um, habanero, uh, habanero pineapple, like on my shrimp and stuff like that. It's absolutely delicious. You want to start these um, indoors eight to 10 weeks before the last frost. Days to germinate are seven to 10 days. Germination temperature, 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 to 29 degrees Celsius. Days to maturity are 75 days. Plant spacing is 12 to 18 inches. Um, the fruit size is one to two inches long. And when you're planting something like this, just a reminder, when you are planting it, just plant a couple, unless you like love ha uh, habaneros so much, you want a giant field of them. Because if you even plant like four of these plants, you're going to have habaneros coming out your ears because it's just, they're, pro they're prolific. Um, they're really hot. You want to plant these about um, a fourth of an inch deep. They are container friendly. So if you want something cool on your back porch with the red peppers, um, that'd be kind of cool and kind of fashionable for your back porch. Um, you want to put them in uh, full sun. Um, and days to germinate are seven to 10 days. Uh, germination temperature, the 75 to 85 degrees um, and 23 to 29 degrees Celsius. Maturity is 75 days and plant spacing is 12 to 18 inches and the fruit size is one to two inches long. Um, to harvest peppers, use sharp shears to cut the pepper stem from the plant to avoid plant damage. Once peppers mature to their specialized color, the fruit will become more tender, signaling its ripeness. And yeah, um, I would say the more you leave it on the vine or the longer you leave it on the plant, the hotter it's going to get. So yeah, um, they're about 20 to 140 times hotter, hotter than a jalapeno and it's Scoville units about a hundred thousand to 300,000, 350,000 summers in that range. You kind of range a little differently. And it's, you know, what's great about the high Bonero? It has like a sweetie flavor sweet flavor mm -hmm. but it's also like a fruity flavor it's weird when you talk about hot peppers and you're like fruity like it's a hot pepper yeah, yeah. It's fruity taste it's, it's really also good be for you. yeah um that it does it has a different taste than most peppers um mm -hmm. but you do get that kick um so if you guys are really into fire ciders um, for being sick and stuff like that, a good habanero, you'd probably only want to use one or cut one in half and put it in it because it's like really hot but it'd be good in a fire cider um when you're sick or you can make a habanero tincture or something like that it'd be really good for you and they also have like a tropical and a smoky flavor too so you'll see them in some kind of uh if you went to like a fast food restaurant with sauces for chicken and stuff you usually see a lot of smoky because they have the smoky and the fruity it just it works so well in so many sauces yeah. You know, I used to not like hot peppers either, um, but I do like a good ghost pepper. However, I don't think I've had a full on ghost pepper. The stuff that I've tasted has just been like ghost pepper sauce. So it's mm -hmm. probably dumbed down like a hundred thousand percent, you know. So I do like the taste of what a ghost pepper could be. I never had like the full on pepper. I'm sure it's like tremendously hot. So. So the other day I had pepper X steak sauce. Pepper X is the hottest pepper in the Guinness Book of World Records by Ed Curry from Pucker Butt. And it wasn't that bad. I was kind of shocked. <laughs> I was like, that was yeah, it was hot, but it wasn't like I was dead. Like yeah. there's no way I would have it. I was totally shocked by it was a pepper X and it was good. It was tasted good. It tasted really good. I was really shocked. I shared it with somebody at my work. Um, actually, I gave it to her for a Christmas gift. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah, she was um, this lady. She's her, her name is Wendy, and she likes hot foods, hot sauces. And it's great that she's at my work, but she's like seventy, maybe seventy-five. I'm not summers around that range, maybe even higher, <laughs> higher than seventy-five. But she likes hot stuff, so I'm like, here, try this. <laughs> And it's like, yes, if she could have it, I could have it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, when you grow those small little peppers like that, guys, you get 
a lot. And if you don't like extremely hot peppers, I know Baker Creek and maybe even on my gardener, I'm not sure, um, have peppers called habanadas, which are, a, it's a habanero cross, but it's not hot. So you can get habanadas. I grew those one year and I got prolific um, habanadas. And they have um, habanadas and they have a jalapeno one that is not hot too. And I can't think of what that's called. <laughs> so something to think about. Habanada. Okay, so Long Island Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> um, this semi-dwarf plant produces several tasty sprouts on, on the short, self-supporting stems. Um, introduced at the end of the 19th century, um, this was once one of the most important commercial varieties. Heavy yields of delicious fresh sprouts, um, wonderfully eaten, uh, steamed, or sautéed. Um, you want to plant these about a fourth of an inch deep. They require full sun. They're very cold tolerant. Um, you want to uh, prune the leaves. That's one thing I learned with um, growing these is you have to prune the leaves back in order to get big Brussels sprouts. So you'll want to do that. Um, you want to start this um, indoors about two to three weeks before the last frost. You want to direct sow three to four weeks prior to the uh, last frost or for the fall. Uh, days to germinate are five to 10 days. Germination temperature 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 to 21 degrees Celsius. Days to maturity are 75 to 115 days. Plant spacing is 15 to 18 inches and the plant size is 24 inches tall. To grow large Brussels sprouts, um, begin um, pruning the lower foliage after you begin to see um, buds forming. Only leaving the top one third of the foliage allowed to um, for photosynthesis. After the uh, frost, choose the har harvest. I'm sorry, this is kind of um, blurry. Harvest individual sprouts or cut the stalk at the base of the plant um, to harvest all at once. If pulled um, with the roots prior to the ground freezing, um, they can be stored in a cool, dark place for about four to six weeks. And um, there's some delicious recipes that you can make with Brussels sprouts. Um, I used to not like them, but when you can cut them up and like put a vinaigrette or something over them or um, bake them with a little Parmesan cheese or something like that, I mean, they're absolutely delicious. Um, it's something that I didn't really even like until I got older. So um, it's a very delicious vegetable. I agree. My mother ruined it for me. She just put them in an oven. It was like she put stuff on. It was like disgusting, dry, too yeah. burnt. But once you know how to cook Brussels sprouts, oh, it's a game changer. They're so good. Yeah, a lot of times now restaurants will have Brussels sprouts as a side. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'll just like, oh, can I have your Brussels sprouts? And they usually have them with like a vinaigrette or something like that. And it's so delicious. Well, welcome in, uh, Tasha Lynn. It's good to see you. Good to see you here. I don't know if the purple tastes any different. I haven't had the opportunity to plant the purple. Um, I would assume that it kind of tastes like a purple cabbage because Brussels sprouts kind of taste like cabbage. So, And Riverdale Gardens and D Gardens Adventure said not a Pinot. Not That's a Pinot. Thank you. I couldn't think of the other one's name. Thank you. Yeah, it's Habanada and not a Pino. Those are the ones. And by the way, one year I got them mixed up. I grew regular jalapenos and not a Pinos. And I was on my Facebook Live and I was going to eat one. And I, I I didn't trust it, quite trust it, because I knew I got them mixed up. And I just like bit the tip off of the jalapeno and it was hot. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't what Surprise. I thought. Yeah, because I got them mixed up. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You know, sometimes it is, you might have one pepper that might be hot in the whole entire plant. Mm, yeah, that's another, true. You know. Yeah. Okay. Okay, butter so moving on to butter crunch. Butter crunch. Um, I've grown this before. Um, it's actually really delicious, but it's not as crunchy as I, what I would like. But it's always worth giving lettuce a try. So butter crunch um, head lettuce. Uh, Buttercrunch lettuce is heat tolerant variety um, that is slow to bolt. Um, these leaves are soft and crisp, making it a perfect base for any salad. The plants are great for square foot gardening because of their ability to be planted closely together. Um, can be started earlier in the season because of very high tolerance for cold weather. 
Um, indoors four to uh, four weeks before transplanting, and you must uh, direct sow as soon as the soil is workable. So I could probably um, start it right now. Um, days to germinate are seven to ten days. Uh, germination temperature between 50 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, 10 to 22 degrees Celsius. Days of maturity are 55 to 65 days. Plant spacing is 8 to 12 inches. Plant size is about 6 to 8 inches for the head. Um, and you want to plant these about a fourth of an inch deep. They're container friendly. Um, full sun to partial sun. Um, they are cold tolerant. And it says right here um, two to four weeks um, for germination. Uh, lettuce is the best harvested in the early mornings to avoid wilting. Um, for cut... <clears throat> for cut and come again after the first 21 days, harvest the outer leaves as they mature, leaving the center of the plant to continue to produce throughout the season. Um, you can harvest the head by either pulling the plant out or cutting all the base of the soil using sharp shears. And um, that's kind of what I do to keep it growing is I just like take what I can around it I don't take everything at once. And then that way it keeps growing. And I do that a lot, even with my loose leaf lettuce. I'll just, you know, trim the tops and then I will leave the rest in there. So you can have salad then for weeks um, afterwards because you just kind of let it grow. So that's what I do. Yeah, I plan in, I plan in planting this in the ground for me. My, my, my Merming lettuce, I just put it in a grow bag. Put it on a table and grow from there. Put a little, put a little trifecta, and it will grow really well for you. Nice. So, but butter crunch, I just find that it's, this will be a lot better in the ground than a, than a bag. That's for sure. So, yeah. yeah oh, oh, oh don't if you can't avoid uh, buying lettuce in the store, I would highly suggest doing so. Um, get yourself um, a pot. Put it in the window, grow your own lettuce, leaf lettuce in your window, or if you have a cheap uh, arrow garden set, get yourself um, an arrow garden set and grow it in your window. Um, or if you have, um, I know I have a grow station in my basement, I could easily grow lettuce down there. Um, or um, I know in the past I've actually gotten a um, huge tote, a see-through tote, and put a, um, a bag of soil in it and put and loaded that down with lettuce seed and then covered it back up and then put it outside and it actually grew lettuce it was like like my mini uh greenhouse all winter long and then that way you have your own lettuce you know what's in it and it grows fast for you so um that's what i would do and yes right now lettuce sucks in general like i had an iceberg salad um for lunch and mm. literally the leaves and my iceberg was completely white and clear. Like it was not, you could no. just tell there was no nutritional value in that whatsoever. That's terrible. I'm yeah. like, how do you put that out there even? <laughs> I'm like, there has to be oh. something wrong. <laughs> Gross. Uh, welcome in Feathered Friends Homestead. It's good to see you. Okay, so we're on to the Minnesota midget. <laughs> I just love saying that. <laughs> the Minnesota <laughs> midget cantaloupe. Okay, so I love cantaloupe. It's like one of my favorites. Usually this time of year, um, grow, getting cantaloupe anywhere, it's like hard and disgusting. But a really good cantaloupe can rock my world, I can tell you that. Um, it's so delicious. It's like one of my favorites. I love uh, cantaloupes. I love honeydews. I love watermelons. They're all my favorites. So um, my goal is to grow these and grow them well. So let's start by a small personal size cantaloupe that has a small footprint, making it ideal um, for small gardens, patio gardens or square foot gardens. Um, plant a produce three to seven, um, three to seven sweet orange flesh melons. The um, small seed cavity um, gives way to more sweet flesh to snack on. So that sounds delicious. Um, you want to start it indoors three weeks before the last frost. Direct so one to two weeks after the last frost. Um, days to germinate are seven to ten days. Germination temperature is 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 uh, to 31 degrees Celsius. Days to maturity are 75 days. Um, 
Plant spacing is 12 to 36 inches and fruit size are one to two pounds. Now it says days to maturity are 75 days. That's something that you, if you want to really purchase cantaloupe, you're really going to have to think about it, um, what your first frost date is and when your end frost date is. Because there are some melons out there that take like, they would take the entire summer to grow. So if you can grow smaller melons or different varieties that only last like 75 days, um, then you will get a melon before the end of the summer and you can enjoy it versus, mm. you know, it's like October and you still don't have a melon and your frost date is around the corner and you're like, when is it going to be there? <laughs> like start freaking out a little bit. Okay. So you want to grow these about a half inch deep. Um, plants, um, the seeds, two to three seeds in a mound. And then um, you, it requires full sun. And you can use these as a climbing. Um, and you know, this is really funny. I've seen uh, people use all different kinds of things to hold these in place um, when they have climbed because, yes, they can get kind of heavy. That's one to two pounds hanging there. I've seen people use bras, old bras that they put um, the melon in and hang it. Um, I've seen, you know, those orange um, orange bags that they're like um, for oranges and they're mm -hmm. like you can use that and it will hold it steady. Um, so it'll keep it from falling and smashing onto the ground, but using an old bra is even funny. Um, Mike says he uses old, uh, uses pantyhose. That's, that's cool. <laughs> you can use bras and pantyhose and make your neighbors think what in the heck? No. <laughs> well, he is growing a melon. <laughs> <laughs> um, Signs to signify ripe fruit. Now, this is the part I always get messed up. I will always end up picking my fruit early because I'm an airhead and I can never figure out how the heck to pick these when they're ripe. So signs to signify ripe fruit. Um, the tendril closest to the first um, fruit will be dried up once melons are close to ripeness. You will also notice a change in the rind color from green to a dull gray or yellow when they are ripe the melon will come off the vine very easily so that's something to think think of by the way i always end up like i i'm the same way with pumpkins or squash or something i'm like how do i know if this is ready i'm like i don't know like and then someone taught me that it you know especially with pumpkins if that little like swirly thing that's coming out of the pumpkins if that is like you know dried up then your pumpkin's ready. So there's just little things um, to think about um, when you plant stuff like that, because I always have a really hard time trying to figure out if it's ripe or not. And that is the same in the grocery store. I'm like, how do I pick the best cantaloupe from the grocery store? You know, so um, that's little things, little things that'll help. Take care, Howie. Bye, Howie. And welcome in, Gil. Thanks for coming in, Gil. Yeah. All this underwear stuff and all this used underwear. I don't want to see any used underwear out there. <laughs> uh, like sometimes, like I, if I, not to, I don't want to really get into it, but like sometimes if I see a cheap bra on sale, I, um, I just buy it without thinking, without trying it on. And then most of the time I'm like, oh crap, I'm not going to take that back because it was only like a couple bucks or something. So then I end up using it in the garden. <laughs> so that's something to think about too. You can also crochet something too. Oh yeah, you get to make crochet little net netties or whatever you want to do to hold them up. See, that's what I was thinking when I have my so those that weren't here last week, uh, <laughs> two days ago. Well, I'm growing the uh, the goat tomato. <laughs> what is the goat tomato? Well, it's a goat back tomato and a cow's tit tomato. <laughs> 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 Going to make the goat. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be my. I'm gonna try doing that this year. So I'm, I might need a need a might need a bra for that or two or three. <laughs> Wait till you see what's hanging there. <laughs> Very um, cool ideas. I've never had really big success with um, growing tigger melons or anything like that. Um, up a trellis. Um, in the past, I I grew um some other melons at went up a trellis and it just didn't work out for me so if you guys can do it thumbs up for you 
disposal face mask worth is my honeydew melon and acorn squash cattle panel. Oh, that's cool. Good idea. But Joe will need bras. You know where to send them. <laughs> <laughs> my wife will love that when he got sent me a bra. She'll be like, what the heck is this? I'm like, honey, they're for the garden. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to get a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. If you guys have any questions, you feel free to put them up. Thank you guys for all for staying. We're going to be. If you are really looking for good starter trays and it's an investment, but I would go to Bootstrap Farmer. They have the best starter trays and the best domes I have ever seen. Um, Bootstrap Farmer has some really good equipment. It is pricey. However, those trays last you forever and they're made from really good material. And that's what I use in my grow stations in my basement. The domes have like little circles in the top where you can close them up or open them. And um, really it's the best. So Bootstrap Farmer is where I go for those. Yeah. Or label them garden bras. <laughs> permanent marker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. I'll make sure to make sure you send the neon colored ones, like the neon green and pink. <laughs> yeah. Happy Mac, were you actually Googling uh, goat bras? <laughs> Tell her it's a bros ear. <laughs> You're cracking me up. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I tell you what, if that tomato turns out to be a hit, <laughs> that's so freaking funny. Can someone put the Bootstrap Farmer uh, link in the side chat for me so people can go to it? It's actually really awesome. They can be kind of pricey, but it's really good equipment um, for your garden. And they have high tunnels and stuff like that. So if you're interested in high tunnels, they have that. And um, they also have like really good equipment. So check it out. These trays that we bought, they've lasted us now for years versus the ones that we had just bought in the store. Those ones always seem to rip or tear or something like that. But these ones are perfect. Um, just to let you guys know for Sunday, Sunday fun day is going to be on this channel, probably for the rest of the month. Hopefully you guys um, will film my Sunday fun day video, registration video. Yep. That's uh, a lot of people watch that. That's for sure. That was good. And uh, I don't know. Did you hear from Jay Dixon? Nope. I did do an email. I haven't seen Jay. It's starting to get really worried. Yeah, me too. Thanks for putting that out, Jane. Do I appreciate it? Um, go to that link. Um, you just shop around. They might have some discounts right now. But really, honestly, it's really great product, and it's something that I trust. I can go to, and it, it's good product, good stuff. So there's Jane with the Bootstrap Farmers website, and the Jersey Twister. People that don't like to buy really cheap at first, because I spent I've I spent so much time buying trays that rip, and with the Bootstrap Farmer trays. Like they don't rip at all. It's such a heavy plastic and it's so it's such a nice material that you don't that you could use it for literally years. And it's you know, so you get what you pay for, basically. I have been saving jugs to try first time this year. Awesome. Good for you. I tell you what, we're saving jugs. We got melon growing, we got uh goat bags going on. What's going on here? <laughs> I've seen people actually grow in egg cartons. So if you don't have the money for something yet, like Bootstrap Farmer or something like that, um, you can use egg cartons and grow in those as well. I've seen people do that. You know, just to stratify your seeds outside in the weather and they'll just get accustomed to, to it outside like that with the winter sowing. Yeah, when you get your poppies and it's snowing out, um, you can actually throw your poppy seeds on top of the snow and then they will grow there in the spring. And then you will get your spring poppies. Yep. It's so cool. 
they're beautiful. I've had poppies pop up like they like randomly now throughout the <laughs> past five or six years. Just random. Like, what is that? And then it pops up like, whoa, it's beautiful. I didn't plant it there though. <laughs> yep, lavender too. Yep, exactly. <laughs> And uh, where Riverdale Gardens, I started to see it's in toilet paper tubes. That's cool. Well, I hope you like it, uh, Ta Atasha. Um, uh, it is a really good um site, it's cool. And they have, and you know, for me, I'm a dreamer, so I like to go there and look at their. I really want a high tunnel, I want one so bad. And um, I go, I go there and I dream a little bit because you know, I want, I want a bootstrap farmer high tunnel. Who doesn't like? <laughs> So I dream a little bit when I go on sites. The Pare bottles. Oh, that's a good idea. Yep, that's true. That's true, Ninja. Is it becoming a green stalker. I don't think. I don't know if I said hi before. Yeah, I didn't see her come in. Hello. Awesome. Well, now we're going to get down. Oh, by the way, the registration video, if you guys want to win stuff on Sunday, you got to leave a comment in the registration video because it's to the wheel. Sunday, fun day, it's all about the wheel. And yeah, so let's uh, let's go down to see who's going to win any seeds that we've been talking about. Giveaway tool. Okay, let me uh, back up here. Are the solo cups from your college years? By the way, <laughs> I, live college, I live in a college town, and we used to do DoorDash, my husband and I, on the weekends to get extra money. And we would do it in the college town. And, like, you pull up, you're delivering, like, Jimmy John's or something to a college frat house or something. And they're all playing, like, you know, flip cup and stuff in the back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just reminds me of when I was young. <laughs> Younger. It didn't remind me too many years ago at all when I was tailgating <laughs> in the Rutgers games. <laughs> That's all you've seen. Ooh, we got people already entering it. Wow. So this is hashtag the goat. So this is for the MI Gardener seeds. Oh, I'm there glad you liked the chicks. Cool. When it weather gets a little better, I'll videotape more of my animals or videotape. You know how old I am by saying that. I'll video more of my animals. <laughs> there is no yeah. tape anymore. <laughs> Our registration videos are going to be a little longer. So 10 minutes is great. You know, whatever. Um, they're not going to be a two minute video. We want to make sure you get, we show you what's going on in our yard, you know, whatever we're doing. So it's it's going to be important. Like Garden State Gardeners taking you around New Jersey a little bit. But even though this is still Garden State Garden sort of a way, it's kind of not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's so, uh, you know, I want to make sure um, everybody gets to know us in different kind of ways. So it's good. So there's 46 people in the chat. Thank you guys for being here for so long. 32 people so far to entered. We'll go about one more minute. It's 8.48, so we're, we plan to be done at 9. So we try to stay around two hours, two hours, five minutes, something like that. So we're still at 32. Wait one more minute. There's 47 people in the chat. Uh, Tuesday's interview, we're not sure yet. Um. I'm thinking to get Mary's heirloom seeds here on Tuesday. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if uh, she's going to be available. You know, because when you go out west during a week, it's, yeah, it could be seven o'clock start here, but what time did it get done during the day? So we'll, uh, I want to try to get those uh, people out west and the people in the UK in the winter rather than in the summer. Okay. So there's 48 people here, 32 people that entered. First one is the Reg Burgundy, Reg, uh, Reg Red Burgundy Okra. 33 entries. Okay, here comes the draw. Mm -hmm. 
Susan Goulet! Congratulations, Susan Goulet. I do miss the wheel and the polka right now, though. <laughs> so congratulations, Susan Goulet. The next one is going to be the Kohlrabi. Here we go. Ted Pottle. Ted. Congratulations, Ted. <clears throat> awesome. Congratulations, Ted. Next one's going to be the Hibernero Caribbean Red Pepper. Shawnee. Congratulations. Big winner today. Yeah, she is. Congratulations, honey. Boom. Long Island Brussels sprout. Wowzers. <laughs> Wazoom. Kim G. Kim G. Butter crunch lettuce. Built on a rock homestead. And cantaloupe. Feathered Friends Homestead. So make sure you guys email me. Stop sharing. That was pretty awesome. Love that. Um, I'm not going to give out the books today because we gave out more seeds. I'm going to save the books for Sunday Fun Day. So make sure you guys leave a comment in a registration post and share it out too. Um, we're trying to get monetized, and that that we need hours to get monetized. We're so, so close, uh, guys, we are so close. <sighs> so, um, more people in the chat staying in two hour live really helps. And if you guys watch our any of your videos, that helps out too. But when you're in a live, it, it helps you out so much more than watching a video. So, we appreciate if, uh, if you guys could watch it as you know what you guys can do, we appreciate that. Um, so congratulations to all our winners. Welcome our treasured home. Welcome in. It's good to see you. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh, I wanted to show you my seeds now. So, so I, I got more seeds coming in, by the way. <laughs> it's terrible. I got I to gotta definitely stop. Yeah, my uh, husband's like, stop ordering. So he's like, do you think we needed these seeds? He's like, we have thousands of them in the other yeah. room. And I'm like, I know, we need to go through those, though, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to find these seeds. I already got them. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, Bristol Cucumber. Yeah. These are from all Johnny Seeds. Um, now I got, I like, I wanted to get all my peppers there too. Oh, this is the basil. This basil is one of the best basils you could get. Um, I know that cause New Jersey, they've been working with New Jersey ruckers and stuff on it, on these seeds. So I know this is an excellent variety for, uh, disease, especially today's disease world for plants. A hot pepper. Arriba! <laughs> and let me just read others because this is probably... I also got the two eggplants. The Thanos eggplant. And uh, let me see what this one is. Can you read that one? Ciabatta. 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 So I got two different eggplants. I'm also still growing at my gardener's eggplants too, but I wanted to... 
I like I like doing studies, guys. I have always liked doing studies, vegetables next to each other. Like, why is this better than the other vegetable? And plus, if you have, if you think you if you have any problems, do your own own compost tea. You want those microbes back to your plants, especially if they're not used to those conditions. Let me see. I'm also showing the cherry tomato. Oh. I got the bomb. I've grown this in the past. The cherry bomb. Yeah, those are kind of hot, but they're good. Another grape. So I got three grapes I'm growing. So Juliet and we got the five star. So we're going to see. Uh, I forgot the other kind. So we're going to see the difference in that. <clears throat> Sweet peppers. Oh. I love peppers. Mm. And I also got the Carmen pepper. <laughs> That's always been highly uh, recommended. The lunchbox yellow pepper, lunchbox red pepper. Um, the kids love them here. Uh, my sister in law's kids, they just. Oh, I just love lunchbox them peppers. Oh, they're so good. I also got the lunchbox orange. So I got all lunchbox collars taken care of. Um, but I wanted to try different things from California Bell, and uh, the it's in it's a northern pepper. I forgot what it was offhand. Kaylin, I've never had the purple bells. I don't know what they taste like. A sailfish bell pepper. Ooh. So it's almost like a carmine, I believe. Uh, so well, no. Different. Um, no, it depends. Milk and honey. If you're using it directly from the the worms and you using worm tea, you can use that right away. You do have to water it down. Don't put that directly on your garden because that stuff that's coming out of there will burn your garden. You have to water it down. This is the King Gother. Ooh. I'm going to be the king. I really wanted to grow really big bell peppers. Pop peppers, I have always grown really well. I grew those mini bells one year, those little teeny mm. things. It was such a waste of time. I was so mad. Ooh, yes. so. so I plan to sell a lot of these in front of my house this year because I do got to, I really don't want to work Uber as long as I can't, as I have to. I've been, I worked my butt off too hard inside and out 24 uh, seven in the summer. Oh, thanks, Jane. So by, Sorry. by growing this, I, it's, it's going to be fine. Jane uh, Doe awesome. uh, Jane Doe already told her. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and make sure if you guys want, please email me. That really helps. Um, any other questions in the chat, guys? Uh, and Mike said with the Yeah, I did snack a bell peppers too, very tiny. Yeah, it was just a waste of time. I like the bigger ones, or I like the lunchbox ones. Those are big enough, but those little teeny mini bells. Hmm. You just want to throw them at people? Yeah. <laughs> I got you! <laughs> <laughs> See, I wonder if that leaves a mark. <laughs> um, let me see what other questions. So Sunday's at 7 o'clock, just like all our times. Um... If you become a member of Quirky's channel too, she preached they uh, she preached they uh, appreciates that. Uh, become a poop trooper; it's a dollar. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. So help her out if you guys can. Yeah. Let me see. And there we go, Jane. Thank you, Jane, for being so awesome. We appreciate that. Oh, and I'm gonna have, Twister's gonna come on over and buy some vegetables. <laughs> well, you'll know from the show. We'll be on the weekends when they're out. I love it. Uh, Kim says, "I miss what seeds on the first round." Oh, let me see. Watch the replay. <laughs> um. Oh, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. Uh, Brussels sprouts. 
Brussels sprouts and mustard, you one can. Um, so we hope everybody has a good weekend. I think I don't see any other questions in the chat. Do you? It's the last compo. Subscribe. And that's great. Thank you for doing that, Atasha. One second. Did I win Karabi Seed? You never said the first spin. Okay. It's like me counting right now. <laughs> uh, let me see. Mike, Mike, Mike. Mustard. Mikey won mustard. It was the wasabi mustard, I think, or whatever. Wasn't it? Yeah. Wasabi! Wasabi! All right. Okay, guys. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you for spending two hours with us. You guys are awesome. Um, you know, it's great when you see 45 people in the chat, pretty much that started a chat and see 45 people at yeah. the end. Uh, that's so awesome. Uh, we're not boring you too much. <laughs> and uh, if there's anything you guys think we could make the growing guides better, just let us know. Um, we, do, we do the best we can, and we appreciate and love you guys. Oh, good so, job, Galen. She bought the bag of trifecta from my gardener. Thank you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right, you guys. Oh, it's been a wonderful night. I had a fun time talking about karabi with y'all. And we will see you next week and uh, Joe and Sunday at 7 p.m. All right, guys. Let's see you Sunday.